In 2010, Minecraft introduced redstone and the nether. In 2011, it added the end, brewing, and enchanting. And then in 2012, we got the wither, beacons, and even villager trading. Modern Minecraft updates don't fundamentally impact the game as any of those things. And the question is why? Why can't we have a new dimension, boss, or game-changing mechanic every year? There are three very good components, actually. And for today's quick dive, we'll start with the first one. In 2011, Mojang updated the menu screen from being this boring dirt block to this beautiful panorama that the Java edition uses to this day. It happened seamlessly from one update to the next. In 2017, however, Mojang showed their plans to implement a new menu screen and it looked beautiful. However, as of 2023, not only has this been parred down drastically, but it's also only available to some users and only in some parts of the menu. The difference is drastic and shows that Minecraft is very scared of accidentally killing the Golden Goose or releasing their lightning in a bottle, or does it? This fun graphic shows major updates to the game between 2009 and 2020, and it doesn't take a genius to see the slowdown from 2015 onwards. This causes many to point the finger directly at Microsoft. Even this graphic seems to be accusing them of being the reason behind the slowdown. However, the bigger culprit could be that Minecraft is unique in allowing players to go back to older versions of their game officially. This means there is even more fear of allowing the game to escape the nostalgia from older versions because other games like World of Warcraft or Call of Duty will remaster their older versions but with subscription fees and microtransactions while Minecraft is effectively doing the opposite. If Minecraft made some bold decisions that went wrong this would lead people to switch to not only other games but also to older versions where Minecraft has no effective control. The corresponding lack of this might be why there's more risk on the bedrock version with development features but that's just speculation. This is the biggest reason that people will give however there is a much bigger one. No game has ever scaled as much as Minecraft. It's not abnormal for a game studio to change size as a game is developed, but Minecraft went from one person to two people to a small office to a team deep into the hundreds of people as you watch this video. This alone has some complexities. Features that would be worked on by a single employee now require a meeting of a dozen to plan, to code, to design art for, to do sound design for, and finally to test. Adding to that pain is the fact that this must work on a dozen platforms, meaning that the team has scaled up 10 times, but so too has the amount of effort required before considering the technical debt that has been added by the many different development phases that it's been through. Technical debt happens when you take shortcuts in writing your code so that you achieve your goal faster, but at the cost of uglier, harder to maintain code. The coding version of solving your messy room by burning your house down, but if you intended to leave your house anyway, as some developers have, maybe it's the easiest way to meet your assignment. Modders who started working on Mojang fairly late on can attest that work Working on the production game has much higher standards than outside, and perhaps the most prolific example of that is King B. Dogs, who was a modder for 10 years before joining Minecraft prior to the Caves and Cliffs update. He has not magically brought a Aether size update to Minecraft every year. It's not because he suddenly got lazy, it's not because the game suddenly got so much harder, but because there's always been so much genuine polish required from dozens of iterations. That is never done in a week or even a month. It takes months of time to get something that is truly worthy of being an update on his own, to use his own words, and so Minecraft spaghetti code is a big reason, but there's perhaps a bigger reason than Microsoft's fear of risk in their $2.5 billion purchase and Mojang's fear of putting out a subpar project, and that is... Ultimately, Mojang is actually a very competent studio. Whatever else you say about their efforts, when push comes to shove, they can do a vast amount in a short period of time. Dungeons had dozens upon dozens of new interesting mob and weapon designs, while Legends was entirely created inside the Bedrock engine. This shows a capability, once removed from technical issues, that is currently not being seen in the vanilla game. The reason why? Maybe the community. People love core Minecraft gameplay, and who's to say another dimension wouldn't ruin it? Who's to say a new weapon wouldn't make PvP less fun? The bigger a Minecraft update, the more potential there is to ruin players' opinions. Like, was the villager trading overhaul needed or overpowered? Is the new nether beautiful and diverse or scary to those who are risk averse? Are the new caves a joy to explore or a pain to light and filled with too many enemies to smite? Ultimately, all three theories have some truth and the only disappointment is the communities for expecting an Aether dimension when really what we actually want is a snazzy new mob and structure 
feature with a handy redstone feature and a piece of wood. Looking at the approval of the last updates, it does seem there is a size that is just right for the majority of people, and ultimately, as much as I would like the community to want bigger updates, that doesn't seem to be a strategy without criticism. Speaking of criticism, let me know what you thought about today's quick dive. This is a brand new series of much shorter explained topics, the opposite of the very deep dives that people have been enjoying, uh, just as a fun way to see something that is much more condensed and scripted. I hope that you've been enjoying it, it's been a fun time to make, and check out the previous ones if you have, or check out Ultra Flat Survival if you want a fun survival experience this month, and indeed any month, because you'll get free updates for life if you get it. But for now, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Thank you.